Greetings, members of the Fraternal Order of Eagles, and thank you for your time today. More importantly, thank you for your generous support of National Jewish Health. I'm Dr. Steve Frankel, a pulmonologist, critical care physician, and the Executive Vice President of Clinical Affairs at National Jewish Health in Denver, Colorado. National Jewish Health is the leading respiratory hospital in the nation and the only hospital to focus directly on respiratory, heart, and immune-related disease. We've been a not-for-profit organization since we were first founded in 1899, and since that time, we have had a mission to care for all, regardless of the ability to pay, as well as a clear focus on finding solutions for complex and debilitating diseases through research and education. Your help makes what we do possible. Earlier this year, your generous support made a difference for our pulmonary hypertension research program and the clinical care of our patients with pulmonary hypertension. The importance of your contribution is highlighted by the recent pandemic, as people with pulmonary hypertension are more susceptible to other illnesses, including being at higher risk for COVID-19. As our communities have faced the challenges of this worldwide pandemic, what we all do together matters even more. National Jewish Health faculty and staff responded quickly to the COVID-19 threat, standing up a variety of testing platforms, helping people during both their acute illness and their recovery from the virus, and turning our research enterprise to the critical task of finding treatments, all the while continuing to provide extraordinary care to all those who need our care. I cannot begin to thank you enough for investing in us a second time this year through our COVID-19 Emergency Response Fund. We believe that the research front is ultimately where the virus will be defeated. And because this disease primarily affects the respiratory system, we have launched numerous COVID-19 research projects, including clinical trials of potential treatments. Among the research programs we now have underway are studies into how COVID-19 affects those with cystic fibrosis, COPD, sarcoidosis, asthma, interstitial lung disease, and those who smoke or vape. In addition, we are collaborating with our Respiratory Institute partners at Mount Sinai in New York, Jefferson Health in Philadelphia, and our partners in Colorado and worldwide to leverage our laboratory research and our clinical efforts. Your gifts help provide key resources to help us help patients. We are truly grateful for your support. And now, I'd like to share some stories from National Jewish Health patients with a video we completed before the pandemic. Please enjoy, and thank you again. We know that children develop asthma after they've had early life respiratory illnesses. We don't understand how that happens. This is a, a tremendously ambitious study in Puerto Rico. We're gonna recruit 3,000 women in pregnancy. We're gonna be there at the birth of their child. We'll follow them until age five. Keep going. I am 22 years old. I have cystic fibrosis. I always wanted to get married and have kids. Then once I started to get sicker, it started to look less and less like a reality. I was pretty much bedridden most days. I'm gasping. I don't know how long this is going to last. I'm realizing if I was to call 911 right now, they might not get here in time to save me if I stop breathing. I get a burger with no bun, and I, I ate it, and my mouth like immediately got itchy. And I'm thinking, I'm having an allergic reaction. We finish our meals. I feel my throat swelling again, and I tell my mom, and she takes my EpiPen out and stabs me in the thigh, and we take a taxi to the nearest hospital. It was like Sydney was allergic to the world. It was not just food that was setting her off. Pain would cause it, stress would cause it. It didn't seem to have any rhyme or reason to it, and suddenly this situation was totally out of our control. All we could do was be afraid of it. I think our, our world became very small. There gets to be a point when the house itself feels like a prison. I'm stopping interacting with my friends. I didn't want to have to go and eat dinner at somebody else's house and kind of like be away from those safe foods. I was afraid that if I ate new foods, I would die. So we went to National Jewish Health in Denver. Cystic fibrosis it affected every single piece of my life. I, in my own house, I was scared to go up the stairs. 
From June to August, my breathing capacity dropped almost in half, going from 65% to 35%. She had gone down so low in terms of her lung function that we had to refer her for a lung transplant evaluation. He was having more and more kind of like off days. We wouldn't even see him. It's like he'd be in the room, a lot of wheezing, there'd be a lot of coughing, there'd be a lot of moaning. But it was definitely a struggle. There were some near-death experiences that certainly that's what they felt like to me, so. Martin has asthma and COPD. Without controlling that, you wouldn't have been a good candidate for the surgery. It seems paradoxical that you could take someone with bad lungs, go in, take out part of each lung, and actually help them breathe better. But in fact, that's what happens in properly selected patients. The NET trial, so this was a big deal. We were a major site for it, really defined that right set of patients to do this procedure on. So to be able to pick that you were the right patient and to have the surgeon do such a great job and see how amazing you look, I mean, it is, it is truly transformational. We've come a long way in the management of asthma, but there's still two million emergency room visits for asthma every year. And over 3,000 people die from asthma every year in the United States. So we still have to do a better job. In the end, we're studying human diseases. And the first thing that you want to do is go to that human population and obtain samples uh, from those subjects and see what's different between their airway and someone that's healthy. Puerto Rico is a population in need. They have among the highest asthma rates in the country and in the world. They have the highest mortality due to asthma. They are not born with asthma. They are born with the predisposition. It's a, an opportunity to have collaboration with big people in centers like National Jewish Health. This study is gonna give us one of the first glimpses into those early life factors behind someone developing asthma. Max Seibold's group pioneered the study of viral gene expression, and now that technique is being replicated across the country, across the world. National Jewish, they're amazing. They've helped me through the hardest experience in my life. Everybody has just kept me positive and fought for new drugs and meds and helped me find things, they never got stuck. National Jewish Health has by far the largest adult CF program in the country. So we're doing over 30 research studies and we're really, really seeing a difference in what we can do for people with CF. Hannah has been on the medication for about two months and now because her lung function is so much better and she no longer needs a transplant, she can actually probably have a baby on her own someday. So that would be amazing because I've always wanted to have kids and I'm like, this is what life is like. I feel like I'm a free bird right now. After this operation, he really did kind of reclaim a quality of life that he hadn't experienced for years. When I originally moved here, I got myself a handicapped uh, placard, which I used all the time. And since the procedure, I still have that in my car. But more often than not, <laughs> when, I'm, <sighs> when, I'm, when I'm in a parking lot, I, I can't bring myself to use it. I don't want to waste I don't want to use a handicap spot when I don't need it. What National Jewish Health did was take her and us and her symptoms and professionally, methodically, sensitively take it one by one to try to solve each problem one at a time. I went on a bike and I worked out for a while and then they found that the throat tightening feeling is real. <laughs> but it's not life-threatening. It was a complicated case, but uh, we were able to peel the layers off. And we found that uncontrolled asthma, reflux, vocal cord dysfunction, and anxiety all contributed to her symptoms. And by managing all of these individual components, we could make her feel better. Just knowing her life actually isn't in danger was so freeing. We are so grateful for what they did. It was just an unbelievable stewardship through a very, very murky place. I mean, I think we were walking on air. It felt like 
the doors were opening again for us. We go out to restaurants, we're back on family vacations. She's out there living life again, and she's happy. I can very heartily say thank you, National Jewish. National Jewish Health. National Jewish Health. Breathing science is life. Breathing science is life. At National Jewish Health, breathing science is life. Thank you.